Uh, I know Rich here has actually, as we were talking, spawned a, a level one uh, avatar uh, using um, the, the sigils himself right there. Mm -hmm. So um, I think this is a, a good opportunity for, for him to kind of jump in. Uh, yeah, so Rich has done a little of this content on his, uh, his, his character here already. Um, so, you know, he's, he's, he's got a little bit of a preview of how it's going to play, uh, how it's going to feel to play through. But uh, I think it's going to be pretty fun. Let's, uh, let's see how he, he performs. Yeah, and I think one thing that I did want to address on uh, that I saw from chat is that uh, character that I have is as close as I can be to being maxed out, you know, because, you know, this is trying to be as relatively close to what I've been practicing on, which has been the tier level 100 Nightmare Dungeons. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a few things that I wanted to call out as well. Um, on the actual... Uh, on the actual sigil itself, I think one difference here is that like I'm not aware of what afflictions I'm going to encounter in, in this battle. So I think you know capping things or getting as close to as cap that can, or things like uh, my armor, my uh, magic resist, my damage, and all those. Just really trying to be ready and prepared for any surprises. Yeah, I know, Rich. Is you've you've because you played through Avatar a little bit. You've built a little bit more survival. Uh, on your on your sork here, um, as opposed to like completely last cannon, he's a little bit more prepared <laughs> than I think some other people would be. Um, but uh, I know with uh, us showcasing here a level one avatar, uh, kind of at least showcases a little bit. It, it, how would you guys compare this to like a nightmare dungeon in terms of like tier uh, difficulty, or like would it be similar to like a, a nightmare dungeon in terms of tier uh, with a level one? Yeah, the level one avatar of Zier is like kind of close to what like a like a level one hundred and four might be. Like that's kind of where things start, uh, and then things step up from there. Now, uh, you'll see here right off the bat, there's there's some big differences, right? Like on the right hand side, you see that there is a bar that's being filled. Uh, you know, avatar of Zier runs are really races against time. Uh, so, Rich here is really focused on killing creatures as fast as he can, uh, in an effort to kind of beat that timer and summon the boss at the end of the experience. You know, uh, loose not dropping for him as he's kind of rolling through this thing. We don't want to slow you down. We want to keep you killing as fast as you can to show off uh, your ability to kind of like survive in these environments. Now, as we step up, one, one thing we think is, uh, is, is, is interesting about this is, you know, we, we actually, um, taking one step back actually, some of the things that, that, that Joe's talked about when we were at, the, uh, at BlizzCon mm. um, was our commitment to uh, end game content and, uh, and itemization rewards and things. The things we want to do to make the game, continue to make the game better. Avatar of Zier is like it's it's designed explicitly to appeal to players who are at this stage of the gameplay experience, and we're looking we're gonna be using it to kind of like think about and iterate upon more features like this we want to bring out in the future. That's one of the reasons why it's a seasonal a seasonal event. You know, it's a, a fun experience for season two, but we'll have a slightly different ideas in the future of how we want to kind of create similar content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, and I know um, with like we can see Rich. By the way, Rich has been so lucky with shrines every single time we've watched him go through. <laughs> yeah. He yes. like consistently gets artillery shrines, which mm -hmm. um, I'm just gonna claim like I don't know, community manager like, Community benefits. Manager Orange. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I think, part of it. you know, I'm, I'm gonna be hundred percent honest with everyone here and those watching all I went super tanky because I think one of the nightmares that I would have is actually to die in the middle of a demo. Uh, <laughs> well, no we'll, we'll, we'll make that happen, <laughs> I promise. Uh, but but right. the, I know the um, with level one, as you can see, Rich is like well ahead of time, so he's mm -hmm. clearly geared out and, and ready for a level one. Um, but at the end of the, the, these uh, avatars, we'll see here in a second as he gets to time, um, we, we do have a little bit of a, like, kind of an end period for, for players, a little bit more of a challenge towards the end. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and one thing that's making this uh, particularly interesting is uh, with the Vampiric Powers in Season 2, uh, with Rich running Metamorphosis regularly, I mean, he's basically got, like, permanent unstoppable. Mm -hmm. You know, as he's just kind of, like, using Flicker Step to keep resetting that unstable currents, and he is just keeping that four-second uh, unstoppable uptime. And, uh, ah, he's he summoned the boss, and, wow, that was spicy right off the bat. So uh, every time you manage to clear one of these levels, you're going to summon three Bloodseekers, who are, you know, pretty strong. They're going to have, the, uh, you know, affixes of their own uh, that you're going to have to go ahead and clear through. The timer is still ticking, but, uh, you know, Rich has got a really good healthy lead on the timer right now, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. It's just going to be a question of whether or not he gets spiked by something he didn't expect. 
But with the amount of barrier you should be able to pack with your Sork at this point, I don't think that should be a problem. I don't this know. is a unfavorable it's, it's, spot. Is, yeah, I don't, like the, I don't like this spot. Won't, won't you're, you're, you're in some tight I think, corners here. I think in every single practice this has happened, but what I'm, what I'm feeling lucky about is that I don't have a suppressor, which is definitely a nightmare yeah, for me and my ball lightning. But yes, I'll pass it back over to you because there's oh. actually some pretty cool oh. stuff. Uh, to call out over here. Yeah, so yeah, okay, so upon finishing your first run through the Abattoir of Zero, you're going to actually, you're going to earn your first, you're going to earn, rather, the special glyph associated with the seasonal event, which is the Tears of Blood glyph uh, that you can see here. Now, uh, Rich has already uh, spent a little, uh, spent some XP on this, upgrading it before, uh, but this is an extraordinarily powerful uh, multiplicative bonus glyph that you get to kind of slot in. You know, this has got 200 levels associated with it for you to upgrade through over the course of time. It starts out at the size of a tier 15 normal glyph, a mm -hmm. uh, normal rare glyph. So it is extremely strong right off the bat. So you're going to be able to use this to kind of help you get through some of the more difficult uh, tiers as you go deeper and deeper into the experience. And there's one other really neat thing about this as well. So, the, so this experience, uh, the Tears of Blood glyph itself has like a lot of Paragon Glyph XP that you need in order to upgrade it as you continue to like go on through the experience. Uh, and one of the things you wanted to do was uh, make sure that if you're at this stage, if you want to experiment with other glyphs, you can still, like, you get giant amounts of XP from finishing yeah. Avatar of Zero. Yeah, thousand. Thousand. Yeah, thousand. Thousand. Players from tier right one, saw 1,000 yeah. XP. From, a tier, so, yeah. from a tier one, you get 1,000. So if you want to use this as an opportunity to kind of, like, rank up some of those other glyphs you've got because you want to play with other things mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, for other builds and other things, here's an opportunity for you to kind of, like, go in quickly, uh, like, level up a bunch of those other glyphs that you have, uh, in addition to, like, you know, not taking too much time away from your Tears of the Blood if you're trying to, like, stay, keep pace mm -hmm. with that. Uh, but we think that's like an extra fun little bit. But yeah, Tears of Blood Glyph, super powerful uh, for players to be able to engage with. Again, it's only here for the season, uh, and it, it'll, it'll be retired at the end of that season. Yeah, and like we, we just saw Rich, of course, you know, churn through a level one pretty, pretty easily. I mean, yeah. we struggled a little at the end, but... <laughs> it was a little struggle. I got a little nervous. It wasn't too bad. Wasn't too bad. Yeah. Uh, but um, I, I know, Rich, how, like what key or what uh, sigils do you have here? So I think what I did over there was a the sigil one. Uh, I think what we were talking about was trying to make like an engagement moment, uh, basically by having chat almost pick the challenge ahead. Okay. So what I've pre-crafted beforehand is a two, a six, as well as a ten. Funny uh, enough, okay. I created backups for this because like, hey, I might die. But <laughs> um, I think it's just one of those things where I would love to reserve the ten and beyond levels uh, okay. for a later moment. Yes, but yeah. Adam, and, you had a great and, idea. And as a as a reminder, like uh, uh, tiers for for abattoirs here go up to twenty five. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Um, there are a significant amount of tiers, and they of course go up in difficulty by a pretty like almost an exponential amount as you're going from uh, tier to tier. But be yeah. curious, it, okay, all right, like, you already asked the chat, and the chat is already going, like, screaming 10. Yeah. So they just want you to die. Okay, uh, okay. we, we which... said, like, we're going to let chat choose 2, 6, or 10. We'll see what they say. I'm like, it's going to be 10. They're going to absolutely want to see They're <laughs> They're going to want to see 10. So, uh, Rich, take us into a uh, tier 10, and yes. let's see how he does. Um, now, are you going to uh, oh, adjust four, builds you, a little bit you here? You have four well, so, too. I just want to call it you. I mean, a few things here, I think, for... The, the players at home is that obviously you saw that the previous one I was geared up to be a little bit more tanky because the last thing that I want to do is embarrass myself and die on there. <laughs> but I think what Joe and team can do is also explain like how some of the scaling works as I go up. So hmm. I think I'll just go in. I think what I'm trying to balance out now is just try to add a little bit more uh, damage output by sacrificing some of my tankiness. Uh, just because I anticipate that the higher HP is going to be a challenge. And I just, I don't want to lose to the time. Um, and I actually want to see how far I can progress. So let me activate this. Uh, I was like, you went back in. Yeah. <laughs> Without acting. Uh, yeah, you know, so, the nerves, it's the nerves. Yeah, to Rich's point here, I mean, it's not easy to uh, to play play games on stream, right? No, no, it's not. No, no. so this is why we're going to have him narrate a full uh, Romeo and Juliet uh, play to <laughs> us as he's playing yeah. to ensure... Full color you know, commentary. Full, yeah. full concentration yes. on this. Now, so to Rich's point earlier about uh, how the scaling works, so as we were experimenting with this content, one of the things we discovered pretty quickly is we just didn't want to continue to scale monster damage up you know, in a really, really uh, significant way as you're kind of going through this content. Uh, we really want to focus a lot more on monster health scaling as you go. Uh, because you, you, we get quickly get to a point where like any bat that kind of like clips you, which is basically just you know completely ice you unless you're vulnerable at that point, and it, it just makes it a less fun experience overall. So we wanted to make sure it was much more about like can you beat that timer? Can you survive the bosses at the end? 
you know, not as much about like damage gets so, so high over the course of time that there's just no, there's no opportunity for different classes to really be able to perform, right? Yeah, and the, uh, the Tears of Blood glyph really is going to increase your damage output. Yes. All right, so leveling did, that did, up is Did you actually have the, the, your Tears for Blood glyph uh, equipped? Oh, is it equipped? So I did not, and I think uh, one of the things that I wanted well, to do, I mean, for me, I think as I've been um, going in and testing it, like, I think it's actually been a pretty cool experience to see, like, how it's been with and without. Mm -hmm. um, I think just exploring a little bit more into it as well, mm -hmm. like, while my Paracon board is optimized for what I have here, it's definitely opening up a, lo a lot more. Oh, hold hold on a second. Can you also, you didn't replenish your potions no, you before you I went tried in to here. Warn him. So, it's about... Uh, this is for the mistakes streak. were made. This, this, is, for the, this is for the streak. Oh, I see. You're this trying is to give yourself streak, a disadvantage right? for, for, for <laughs> clicks. I see. This, this is for the streak. We got more max potions. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. Rich, Rich, Rich did not do himself a few favors here. One, he did not replenish his potions, and then two, he did not equip right. the Tears for Blood Cliff. Yeah, you, uh, they because, are falling behind that timer pretty quickly. Yeah, because he wanted to be a show off yes. and is not yeah. showing off. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting to see how valuable, you were talking about this earlier, how valuable the, uh, the vampire, vampiric powers are in this, mm -hmm. in this content as well. Yeah. Really configuring those. Yeah, I mean, once you, if you're permanently unstoppable, like, snake family is a lot less dangerous to deal with across the board. Like, mm -hmm. you don't have to deal with that, like, that charging uh, stun. You don't, have to, deal with, it, yeah. you don't have to deal with the paralyzed. Like, there's a, you know, you have some advantages. I think it's funny that we got snakes randomly twice in a row. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but hey, you know that's the nature of uh, of live gameplay, you know. And and I I will say it's not just snakes though. You can see other things in this. We're right? Yeah, that's end, a great point. It, each time you enter Avatar of Zir, you're gonna have uh, different monsters, different tile sets, mm -hmm. different uh, different layouts. And I think the the big thing here is that my eye is definitely drawn into the timer uh, mm -hmm. compared to how it was in the tier one. You know, I'm definitely not mm -hmm. taking out as many monsters as it. Me to get the potions and, mm -hmm. like and, and that timer is really hurting my feelings right now. That that and everything seems I, fine I will here. say like the normal progression for players will be oh, oh my gosh. <laughs>